Let's now talk about what happens in general when we convolve finite width signals. It turns out that there's a very simple rule to figure out the kind of starting and stopping locations of the resulting convolution, and that can be helpful when you're trying to evaluate the convolution integral. So let's talk about convolving finite width signals. So let's define a signal z of t, and z of t is equal to x of t convolved with y of t. And in this example, x of t is going to be this signal. So we're not really going to go through the nitty-gritty details of actually evaluating the convolution integral. We're just more interested in some very general results that occur when you convolve a signal x of t that only exists on the time axis from some starting position to some stopping time. So the start time we're going to denote by t sub x, x meaning this is the referring to signal x of t, with the superscript start. So that's the starting time. All times before this, x of t is 0. And then x of t stops at t sub x superscript stop. So for all times greater than this time, x of t is equal to 0. So this is why I call this a finite width signal. It only exists on the time axis for this finite period of time. And then let's also define y of t to look something like this. Again, we're not going to go through the details of convolution. We're just trying to talk about what happens when you convolve finite width signals. For, the, for this signal, we're going to use the notation t sub y to indicate we're talking about y of t. And the same superscript notation starts and stops. So y of t is 0 for all times before t sub y start. And it's 0 for all times after t sub y stop. And what we're going to do is we want to evaluate this quantity. z of t is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tau, y of t minus tau d tau. And this is what we know to be the convolution integral. Since both x of t and y of t are finite width, sig finite width signals, we know that for some values of t, the quantities in this convolution integral, namely x of tau, and y of t minus tau, if I were to sketch those for some values of t, then these wouldn't overlap. When they don't overlap, then their product is zero, and when I integrate zero, I get zero out for the result of the convolution for that time t. The question that we want to answer a little bit more clearly is, for what values of t specifically does this happen? So we're going to come up with a very simple rule that tells us how to figure that out. So here are the two finite width signals that we're dealing with again. Let's just redraw those. Their start and stop time locations. It turns out that if you go through the details, and we're not going to prove this, but you've seen this over and over again in examples of convolution that we've worked, that z of t is equal to 0 for all times less than the summation of the start points. So for t less than or equal to t sub x start plus t sub y start. So what is that? That is just the summation of the starting points of the underlying finite width signals. So for all times before this starting point, z of t is 0. So if I was going to plot z of t, this final quantity, I now know that for all times on the time axis before time t sub x start plus t sub y start, that z of t is going to be 0. So now on my time axis, I can go ahead and just write that in. I know z of t is going to be 0 there. We also can show easily that z of t is equal to 0 for all times greater than t sub x stop plus t sub y stop. So what is this? This is just a summation of the stop points. So you just look at x of t and see where it ends. It ends at t sub x stop. You look at y of t and see where it ends. It ends at t sub y stop. If you add those two together, you know that z of t will be 0 for all times greater than or equal to that. So on the time axis, if this is the time t sub x stop plus t sub y stop, I now know that z of t will be 0 for all times greater than or equal to that. What happens in between here? Well, I don't know really exactly what happens in between here. We're not going to go through the details of the convolution. I do know that z of t has a chance of being non-zero in between there, so that's why I kind of drew this cartoon dotted line sketch. It turns out that in between t sub x start plus t sub y start and the stopping point, t sub x stop plus t sub y stop, z of t can still go to zero in there. It can happen, and actually in the little cartoon sketch I made, the dashed red line, it did actually go to zero inside those boundaries. So we're not saying that z of t can't be zero there, but 
it will be zero in this region for all those times below t sub x start plus t sub y start. And it will be zero for all times in this region, all the times above t sub x stop plus t sub y stop. So remember that simple rule. You can easily find the boundaries for where z of t is guaranteed to be zero just by simple addition.